Okay, folks, let's see here. I was giving it this done in half an hour. Let me put a little sugar in my system. Some black cherry soda. I finally found my black cherry soda. Oh, so good as black cherry soda. But I'm not here to talk about that and my issues, I guess, in life. I have many because I have a test to take tomorrow. So I'm going to see how, if I can get this done in half an hour. We'll see. I'm here to talk about some AEW wrestling for I am the one, the only Hobo Tom. And I'm kind of depressed because my t-shirt did not come in yet. I want my Young Bucks t-shirt. But that's not in my control anymore. Um, but I do have some thank yous to give out. I was actually happy I got my black cherry soda and green onions. Chicken dinner is going to be so good on Saturday. Tra -la, la I don't know. I have to go back in my records. But I think you just got tossed out of here. I think that was in reference to a comment I made saying that, for the most part, Impact Wrestling had really just as many viewers on YouTube as Raw did. That's impressive. AEW, although today I had double the amount. So that's interesting. My cats sleep underneath it. I have to get another one of those, too. So much, so many issues. Golly! You, sir, can gotta walk out of here. And Sour Nubilio. I know I'm getting that name wrong. Sour Noob Ilio. Yeah, something like that. You, sir, just told Nikki Cross to take it all off? Those are all my thank yous. If you, you like your own little personalized thank you, you can always interact with me over at uh, WooTube Tamiya. I'm um, there, Hobo Tom. We're doing one of my live streams. Always chat with me, chat me up, um, and like, comment, subscribe. And as I did a couple weeks, did a couple days ago, sometimes I actually do check my gmail account so you can always email as well i'm not here to talk about that i'm here to talk about aw john moxley son of a bitch he made no announcement i wanted to hear john moxley's like announcement but maybe i missed it because i did show up like at 802 i had to feed the birds I had to keep saint francis happy because god knows i need all the help i need tomorrow for my test never hurts um, so we had Eddie Kingston talk. Uh, Cody Rhodes came out, and Eddie Kingston shows up. Well, wait a second. This is an NWA invasion of AEW. Shocked about this. And then Eddie King Eddie Kingston confronts Cody Rhodes, and we just have ourselves a good old Donnie Brook. Eventually, Hernandez has to come from Impact Wrestling. Hernandez and yeah. Hernandez and Eddie Kingston have to take on Santana and Ortiz, a bell of the ex LAXs. One day on AEW, that'd be pretty cool. Uh, so it starts off as a brawl, and all of a sudden they say, oh, Ring the bell! And it's a no DQ match. 
Ouch, those chops. Oh, wow. They just give chop after chop. And Eddie Kingston is definitely the heel. He goes after the eyes. He went, out, he went after the eyes more than Seth went after Ray's eyes. This was more of like an eye versus eye match. Uh, Cody, eventually he does his comeback dive. And Cody, is, he was thinking about it. He was going to whip him that belt, but instead he got whipped instead. There was some like half naked guy sitting on like a lifeguard chair. What's up with that? I think we find out who it is later in the show. Although then he returns. So I don't know if there was like some weird taping thing or if it's who I think it might be. Because it looked a little bit, at least the second guy, he looked a little bit like one Cesar Bononi. Indeed. I think it was on Dark. I forget. No, it, or was it T Tito Set Sabatelli? One of those two, but AEW is just like sucking up all the talent from the greater Orlando area, from the Orlando and Georgia area. Makes sense. Jacksonville is right between the two. But get more of this match. Uh, Kingston, then, of course, after he whips Cody, he exposes the concrete and he eats a big back body drop from Cody onto that. Um, again, Kingston, he went after the ear now, tried to rip, rip apart Cody's ear. This was a more eye versus eye match than the eye versus eye match. Actually, this was a really good match, too. Uh, so many open hand palm strikes. Then uh, Kingston hit a snap mare into the kick to the back. Tried Dragon Sleeper. Cody begins to work over the knees. Oh, that chop block works right over that knee, brother. The knee begins to buckle. But Kingston, because it's a no DQ match, he just went for the low blow. He got on him, and then, whoa, we saw all those thumbtacks come out. I'm a lot of thumbtacks. Cody, um, if they jostle over who's going to eat the thumbtacks, Cody is powerbombed into the thumbtack. Cody's back's a mess. Randy cannot be happy with what Cody's been choosing to do with his life. Um, one, he does some ridiculous dive onto Diamond Plate, which cuts him open the hard, ugly way. He decides to get a ridiculous neck tattoo. Now his back is going to be all kinds of jacked up from landing on thumbtacks. I don't care what you say. Thumbtacks only go down so far. But they go down. I mean, I remember when I stepped on this thing. This evil thing. See that? It was sticking up like that, just like a freaking thumbtack. Got it stuck on my foot. That hurt, and I didn't realize how much I bled because of that. Um, they were, <laughs> although the funny thing is, they were like walking right over the thumbtacks, but they're wearing wrestling boots, so you never know. They must have a nice, big, thick, cushiony heel, or a cushiony sole. By the way, I have to. F That's right, I need to get my job scheduled for next week. And I have to go out there tomorrow. There's so much crap to do tomorrow. So let me get this done. Um, after the thumbtack spot, Cody again goes back after the knees. You know, a little slap fest. Cody locks on the figure four onto Eddie Kingston. You no, know, no. Eddie Kingston had enough. He wants to, he needs the whole backstory. Eddie Kingston, because of coronavirus, had to pawn off his wrestling boots. He just had to buy a new, I guess, a used pair of wrestling boots from someone. I'll tell you what, this match was fun, had motivation, had spots for a new DQ match. They did everything kind of expect. I'll tell you what, when, and, and a lot of people might not like this, but when Cody Rhodes wrestles either WWE people, his brother, or anyone outside of AEW's kind of main roster, like like Kingston's coming from the NWA, he has amazing matches. When he has to keep it confined to people within the AEW, they're not so good, because I'll tell you what, this, folks, was actually, and I don't do this this often, this and Toast, probably Toast is the rarest one, but every so often, 
I think Cody learned something. But this was a filet mignon match. There was MJF and Griff Garrison. I guess he was one of the people. He was one of the, like the lifeguards. I guess because he just like showed up bare chested, like the poor man's vision of Matt Riddell crossed into Brian Pillman. It was just really weird. I mean, he looked he he Griff Garrison looks like the poor man's Matt Riddell. Um, Griff and JF says. Starts talking trash. He's like, Griff's like, you're not in defeat. You just lost a tag match. Of course, MJF the heel just nailed him with a mic. The mic hitting someone in the head is still one of the greatest sounds ever. Um, MJF did an arm ringer into the buckle. He just MJF bites the fingers, all the typical stuff. Uh, Griff eats the, eats the barricade. I'm not, it's not a barricade. It's a bike rack. He eats the covered bike rack. Uh, MJF again. For the most part, dominates this match. He takes the mic, starts to call his own match. Uh, eventually, Griff slaps the mic, goes into MJF's head again. Great mic sound. But now, MJF, MJF is just like, whap, whap, whap. The slaps the snot out of him. Uh, Griff tried to roll up, and that just pissed off MJF. He did the Heat Seeker, which is a type of pile driver, which I didn't get to see. That was a good enough match. For the most part, this was a squash match with some entertaining bits. And, again, the person being squashed, this poor Griff guy, he tried. I can't fault the guy for trying. He tried to get a slap in. He tried to get a roll up in. This is actually a pretty good cheeseburger match. Then we had Britt Baker and Rebel. Rebel was trying to cut a promo, very typically like they do with the um, big poster board. Um, and then it's going to be All Out. I think All Out's going to be in September. We'll see if there'll be a crowd there. Florida and this whole coronavirus thing is, for the most part, going backwards. I now, well... I don't even know if I want to count her. But so now I know, in theory, three people that actually have coronavirus. And I'm not one of them. Uh, one I work with, actually four people, because then there's her son. The 35-year-old has a has a 22-year-old. Hey, I'm just telling you what I think. Or what my guess is. Um... So that's kind of, kind of getting weird because I know they're they're saying masks for everyone, not just Daytona Beach, but still no mask, no service. Even the liquor store is like now it's like no, you need mask or no booze for you. That will get people to wear masks. Um, I don't go there again until Friday because I don't feel like spending the money because I have the hurricane supplies of booze for a long time. Yeah, I've had that big bottle of 90 proof bourbon whiskey. I'll, I'll be fine. Um, it was all out. Little promo. Brian Cage then. Taz comes out. It's a promo for him. Darby Allen shows up. He gets jumped by Ricky Starks. Again, an NWA invasion. Then Moxie comes out with a spiked baseball bat. I'll clear their wing. And then eventually, even though the summer's almost over. There's going to be a women's tag match? A tag team tournament? That's weird, because I don't think they have enough women for a tag team tournament. They have 16... They, they say they have 16 women. Eight teams. They might honestly have exactly 16 women. Just enough for eight teams. That's including Hikaru Shida. Let's see here. Oh, God, you have so many jobber women. That's why. M uh, MJ ja Jackson, um, Chanel, Nyla Rose, Britt Baker, Rebel, I guess, Sheeta,
of the original Mean Girl, Ivelisse, Diamante, they'll, they'll, they'll definitely be a tag team. Um, wait a second. Let me, um, who else? The uh, Canary Woman, that's 10. Brandy the Bunny, that's 12. Riho. Um, Shayna, she's still around. That's 14. Big Swole. And I guess I, I'll tell you what, they just have 16 because they're, especially if you count in, um, I said Chris Statlander. She and I already counted. I guess one of the other Japanese women. That's 16. Yeah. That'll be interesting. That'll be something to snooze through. Uh, so then we have the Inner Circle. And, and Chris Jericho cut a promo. Oh yeah, I said that was a cheeseburger match. Uh, then we have the Young Bucks and the Butcher of the Blade and a False Count Anywhere match. I was kind of disappointed by this match. Two reasons. One, well, I guess I was entertained. They were slapping uh, the Young Bucks, were slapping the Butcher and the Blade with beef. But if you're going to have a no holds barred match and you have these like big chef's knives. I mean, you could at least threaten. Not if be like, no, 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 not, not, not those. But yeah, I mean, if you're going to be wheel, if you're going to be cutting beef, and by the way, they decided to wash your hands after they were cutting beef before they started the wrestling match. That was kind of funny. Because um, it starts in the kitchen, although it's very unsanitary to be wrestling on the cutting room table. Um, then I wanted to see someone get stuffed inside a freezer. And then, of course, it eventually made its way ringside. If you're going to have it in a false count anywhere match, it would be neat to see like them in the owner's suite, especially on the escalator. They could be outside. They were in the locker room. I don't think they made it to a locker room. They made it to the outside to the truck. It was, a, it was an okay match. I can't complain about it. Uh, let's see. It gets to some specifics now. They just started brawling in the kitchen. Um, got kind of really basic. Uh, then into... <laughs> the blade got tossed onto the escalator. That was kind of funny. That was buck friction. Um, the butcher, yeah, he still had his like cutting apron on for a really long time. Generally, that's the first thing I always wanted to take off when I worked in a meat department, fish department. First thing that came off was that freaking apron. That just wasn't fun to wear. But uh, with all that being said. They made, they eventually made it ringside, the blade. Uh, with the blade, they start each eating chair shots. Young Bucks do. Uh, then you have the Flying Bucks. That was pretty fun. The Butcher actually did a double suplex onto both the Young Bucks because he's just a big, strong guy. The blade missed the table. The blade took a bump. Oh, and I just saw her, too. Uh, Chica Tormenta. Like Chica Tormenta did. From Triple Mania last year, because she it looked like she could turn into like concussed herself. The blade looked like he did the same thing. If he keeps on doing that, he's not gonna be doing that for much longer. Because he's gonna knock himself out way too often doing that. And eventually, if you get enough concussions, eventually like something that's like taps you on the head, you just go right to green. So it's it's never good. Um the but the 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 blade missed the table, the butcher didn't, which is good because the butcher missed the table. That's bad. Again, the Young Bucks don't know the rule of tables. You set the tables up. You go through the tables. And the Butcher and Blade obviously did not know any better because they found more tables set those up. Again, Butcher and Blade, the rule of tables applies. 
you set up the table, you go through said table. Um, they actually did because it was by the stage. Young Buck set the butchering blade up and they climbed the scuffling. One dropped the elbow drop, the other did a senton. Oh, that cannot be good for the pack of the neck. The Young Bucks win. Someone really should have been stuffed in the freezer and just had to have a two on one. Or you like threaten someone with like a. Or. I'm mean, thinking we're working where. We're, we're, actually, be kind of cool. If the young buck got up on the butcher block and like almost took a cleaver right to the groin, that, whoa! They did a st stupid, crazy spot like that. That would have been interesting. This was kind of a uh, wrestling match all over the arena. This is what it was. Yeah, it was a cheeseburger match. And Jake Roberts came out with a promo. Lance Archer was beating up some mini jobbers. I don't even think they were local enhancement talent. I just think they were like people like you and I that like work in the concession stands. Because that's what they look like. Just like they're like, hey, you want to earn 50 bucks? This big dude's going to toss you back and forth. I mean, 50 bucks? I'll take it. Then we had Diamante taking on all red everything. Ivelisse. Whoa, since when did Ivelisse get transformed into all red everything, Eva Marie? Ivelisse goes right after Diamante. This was actually fun. Uh, Diamante drop kicks. Ivelisse out of the corner. The chops by both women. Ivelisse again does more chops. Ivelisse, this was a good match. Diamante, German suplex. They did a little wrestling on the outside. Um, Diamante kind of like. Pokes Ivelisse. Well, not, not physically pokes her, but um, kind of baits her into a roll-up situation. This was... I don't know. I don't know why I thought this was a fun match. It's probably more fun. Oh, I know why I thought it was fun. Besides being all red everything. Um, this probably was, was one of the best women matches. And oh my! Even at least your, your your under things were a little too tight because yeah we could see outline of Hamilton <laughs> oh, oh, yeah yes so thank you very much cameraman you got that double cross thumbs up but I'll tell you what overall this was a fun match they they run the ropes good I mean they look like normal women they don't look like schoolgirls I mean there's definitely that fiery Latin attitude for both of them. I'll tell you what, I don't know what it was. I enjoyed this match. These two could actually be a pretty fun women's tag team. They're not having a women's tag team belt, though. That's not happening because they're never going to have enough women to have a women's tag team. I mean, they would have to bring over Marty Bell, uh, Thunder Rosa, Sienna, um, no, not Carmella. Yeah, the other K one. Nick Aldis's valet. Um, Faye Valentine would have to show up. That that coked up bimbo. Um, yeah, it would take a lot. I'll tell you what, it was a good cheeseburger match. Then we have Alan Angel, also number five, versus Hangman Adam Page. It was, pretty, it was actually a pretty decent match. Um, Page starts off, just punches. Yeah, Alan Angels. Adam Page just no-sells his chops. Whenever Alan Angels would chop him, he'd just be like, yeah, whatever. Whap! Give him a good old-fashioned potatoing. Right into the chops. That was good. Um, the good rope running by both. Eventually, Page has that big boot that looked great. Uh, snap suplex after that. Again, the, my only thing that you could... And this is a minor critique, but I, especially if it's true in the COVID area, every so often year, the wrestlers call their spots. When you know they're talking to each other, like, okay, what do we do next? You could definitely tell that Adam Page was calling the match. Um, so, yeah, it is what it was. Page kicks number five off to the apron to the barrack. 
And then to the bike rack. I'm not even calling it the barricade anymore. It's the bike. It's been downgraded to a bike rack. Uh, five. He did a step on Senton after they get back in the ring. Uh, Page has a fallaway slam, rolling elbow, and then a, a toss up power bomb. So he picked him up, power bomb, tossed him up a little bit more, drove him down, almost like a spirit bomb. Uh, Adam Page wins pretty handily. He had a couple instances there where it looked, but then. And the Dark already, already came out just to watch the match. Let's get you out. It was a cheeseburger match. Um, and Brody Lee and Dark Cabana came out. He refused to come on Colt Cabana or Colt Cabana. Uh, Page, he's like, I'm not joining your cult. Uh, he fights off the four man. Eventually, the numbers game is too many. FDR comes out. They just toss a whole bunch of beers and ice in the ring. I like that. And then Kenny Omega. Where was Kenny Omega? The last of the ring. It's not good, Kenny. Then the in the main event of the evening, we have the Lucha Expressing on the inner circle comprised of Jake Hagar and Jericho. Uh, Chris Jericho goes after Jungle Jungle Boy. Uh, starts off heavy strikes. Uh, Jungle Boy eventually has some arm drags. Uh, Chris Jericho tags in Jake Hagar. Jungle Boy thought about it. He paused. He's like, no, I, I, I better tag in. The big guy. I'll tell you what, Luchasaurus and Jake Hager, they were just potatoing each other. Because so there was like there was a bunch of miscues. Luchasaurus, even though for being as agile as he is, and Jake Hagar for having as much experience as he does, man, there were some sloppy spots in those two. Starts off with a hockey fight. And eventually they do some rope running, and then they like run into each other where it looked like Luchasaurus was going to do a clothesline. Not really botchy. Luchasaurus like busted his ear open because he was bleeding from the ear. And like Aubrey Edwards looked at it, it's like, the hell's that? That's not supposed to be here. That's blood. Oh, I better get the black gloves on. Yeah, you can tell because she's like, she's like, like actually looking. She's like, oh, is that what I thought it was? Yes, it is blood. Um, here goes for the ankle lock and begins to work over the legs of the bigger guy, Luchasaurus, uh, Jungle Boy. It's the speed when you can. Marco Stunt got involved. Whoa, that little midget, what's he doing? Might as well be a midget. I know you're not supposed to say it, but guess what? He's short. And since school kid. Uh, let's see here, what else is there? Ortiz tossed the jungle boy into the barricade. Hagar got beat up a lot, dude. Hagar got busted like right across his nose. I don't think he and Luchasaurus like each other. Because they were just, like, even Tony Schiavone said, yeah, they're just trading potatoes right now. So, that's never a good sign. Uh, Chris Jericho went to go get the bat. Aubrey, Aubrey took the bat from him and shoved him. She put her hands on Le Champion. She was giving him a, a she was berating him. Aubrey, tranquilo. You can't put your hands on, on, the rat, on the people like that, Aubrey. You have to tone down that red lipstick of yours. <laughs> yeah, I think one of the funniest lines JR said, oh, I know he, I forget if he said it this match. He might have said it um, in the opening match. He got whipped like a government mule. And you could tell he almost didn't want to say it. He was like, screw it, it's my line anyway. Um, let's see here. Then Jungle Boy and Luchasaurus did some. Uh, Jungle Boy got double chopped by, alternately by Jericho and Hagar. Jungle Boy eventually counters some rope running into D into double DDT. Luchasaurus has a hot tag. Hagar slams Luchasaurus. That was impressive. Um, let's see, here. I know. I think Jericho takes gets the pin. And I'll tell you what, it was a it was a fun enough match. Um. That was a cheeseburger match. Then the inner circle got involved. Everyone started to beat them up. Uh, Serpentico showed up. They're like, wait a second. Who's the Serpentico guy? Yep, it was Sammy Guevara in a mask. <laughs> Gee, that suspension didn't last long. Uh, then eventually Orange, Ca Orange Cassidy and the best friend show up to make the save. Again, it was a cheeseburger match. It was good. It was entertaining. 
And that's it. Only one more show this week. This was actually a pretty good AEW. It was better than last week for some reason. It was a good cheeseburger of a show. Well, I'm going to call it a night because I have a test to take tomorrow and I have to start the processing on this. Friday night. It's going to be the...